Well, 48 Hours senior executive producer Susan Zarinsky is here now to talk about the story. And we heard Tracy Smith say that this is a different type of 48 Hours. You chose to follow the two sisters as they try to keep this man in prison. It's a different angle. Why? Absolutely. You know, normally we end at conviction or arrest, but you know, and people talk about closure for the victims and the families. Mm -hmm. The truth is, most of these families, they may get a temporary moment of relief that somebody's been convicted, but they live with this for their entire lives. Yeah. And these two sisters really felt that it was their mission. Their mom, they said it at the end of the, the excerpt, you know, they didn't get, and mom didn't get a second chance. They feel there should never be a, a reason to let their stepfather out of jail. Yeah. That's just the reality. And so for their entire lives, every two years, they're gonna have to relive this tragedy. So you never really have closure. Mm -hmm. It's a very important point to bring across. Dennis Ott is convicted of murder. I think in a lot of states, he wouldn't even be eligible for parole. Why is he? Well, you know, he's, he's in California, and, you know, he has been a good model prisoner. He has done everything that was asked. He still does not admit guilt. And some parole boards have a mandate um, to admit guilt. This is not the case in California. However, however, in California, they feel it's kind of the opposite of the family's approach. California feels that people can have remorse, can learn to be decent citizens. Mm. And the director of prisons there had an incredible statistic. When they release people, even from violent crimes, less than 1% ever commit another crime that they will be readmitted to prison. Hmm. So you have the family on one side that says never, ever should he walk free, yeah. but you have the, the prison system and there's some financial aspect to it. You know, prisons are expensive and so if they can release somebody and the chances are he won't recommit a violent crime, yeah. so therein lies the rub. But this is yet a, the, we go through this again in this story, this is an update of, of what happens. Yeah. There's another parole hearing and you know, hearing and the sisters is pretty incredible. They're at the other parole hearing? They will go for the rest of their lives. Is that their plan? We heard in that video that they will do everything they can to keep him in, him in prison. What does that entail? That really is monitoring, making sure, keeping track, checking in with the prison, and it is really keeping their mother's memory alive. And look, the, re the reality is uh, parole boards can be emotional uh, hot points yeah. because, you know, you are looking at the family that lives with this. Does he deserve to walk free even if he's done his time? That's a, that's a moral and philosophical question. And mm -hmm. so as the parole board changes, the people change, so you may have different feelings. And the financial pressures may be such that there's a push on the Bureau of Prisons to say, okay, you know, yes, they feel, but we don't feel he's a threat. Yeah, that's very interesting. I'm sure the debate will be raging on Twitter and social media. I know you're always on there when 48 Hours is on. Susan Zerinsky, thank you so much. Thank you. And you can see Tracy Smith's full report, Crime and Punishment, tomorrow night. It's the second show in a 48 Hours double feature starting at 9, 8 central, only on CBS.